Hey guys, what's up? It's Rain Lee and welcome to my YouTube channel. So if this is your first time here, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you're turning, hit that like button. So um, before I... Um, today, I'm going to be talking about things that we Malaysians consider normal but might seem rude or weird in other countries. So yeah, first, very, very, very first thing before I continue this video, don't forget to check out my Patreon, the link is down in the description below and if you become my Patreon, you will get access to exclusive behind the scenes videos from my vlogs and exclusive content that I haven't uploaded to YouTube at all and some exclusive trivia and Q&A sessions as well and you will have access to my Snapchat, my personal Snapchat. So, um, yeah, let's go. Um, first thing, um, laughing with a mouth open. So we in Malaysians just like a good joke and you know instead of just saying LOL or LOL most of us would just like laugh out loud with our mouth open and I noticed my friends from Japan um, when she came here she was always covering her mouth when she laughed and I was like why? Oh she's like it's rude to laugh with her mouth open in Japan so it's considered really normal for us here but it's really rude in Japan so I'm gonna go I'm gonna start with the things that are considered like normal here and then um, ha more and more countries that where they are rude uh, yeah, in the sequence of how many countries they are considered rude or weird in next one giving a thumbs up ooh okay so I once gave a thumbs up to my friends from the Middle East and then they just stared at me and, as if I was offending them and they were so like offended I was like why? they were like oh that's like giving the finger in the Middle East because it was their first time in Malaysia yeah next one this is a personal experience. So um, I went to a restaurant in KL. It's a French chef. It's ge general Western food, like Italian fusion stuff. But it's a French chef. So I ordered pasta because I'm a vegetarian. And um, I asked for chili sauce and pepper because I like spicy food. Then the chef came out and was like, is everything all right? And I'm like, yeah. So later on, I Google as to, because that was the first time a chef ever came out of the kitchen to ask questions. I googled and oh, turns out the French don't really like you adding condiments to the meals. So many other countries are the same as well. <coughs> Oops, sorry guys. So yeah, um, I know Malaysia is a food haven and these countries have like the fine culinary touch, you know, like those countries with fine culinary touch, just like France, where the food is so good, they expect you not to put condiments. But like I said, I'm Malaysian now. I love my spicy food love my chili sauce gotta love it like when we go to mcdonald's they give us like a lot of packets of chili sauce like okay i heard from like people who my some of my friends who went to the uk like over there you had to pay for chili sauce are you kidding me um my dad went to japan before and he said that you have to you when you order the roti chanai there in a, in a malaysian restaurant over there they charge you for the dal in malaysia dal is free on the house non-stop unlimited supply of dal and in fact, um, you know, in, in Chinese restaurants, right, over here, you get the taoyu, you get the vinegar, the chili padi, the garlic, ginger, and everything. Um, I heard from my friends who've been to Chinese restaurants in like the US or the UK, they said that, oh, chili and ginger is, and garlic is usually not provided, so it's a bit weird, because I thought there was an Asian restaurant thing, but turns out it's not, it's a Malaysian thing. Oh yeah, because when I went to China, right, they only had one thing on the table, soy sauce. They had no garlic and chili and ginger. And we were on a school trip, so I asked the waitress, can I have ginger? And she was like, oh, but you have to pay for it. I'm like, okay, never mind. Yeah, so that's my story about condiments. I've experienced so much. Oh, okay, and this was really rude thing in China. Okay, so you know how in Malaysia, right, um... We will call the waiter, waitress or waitresses Xiao Tie, which means little sister. We'll call them Kak, uh, Makchik, which is auntie. We call them Bang, Macha, and all these like slang terms, you know. I went to China, I called the waitress Xiao Tie. She just stared at me like one thing, you know. And then my friend from China looked at me and said, like, you know, right, when you call someone Xiao Tie in China, it seems as if like you're trying to pick them up. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm not wearing glasses right now because, yeah, if I wear my glasses, you can see the reflection. It's really 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 distracting number two i'm not reading from a script i'm just saying what i want to say and my hair is so messy okay i'm saying what i want to say so 
there's no need for me to read from the script right now. Uh, anyway, yeah. So the waitress was a bit pissed at it, I guess. My friend told me, and now I know. So guys, don't ever do that in China. Oh, and um, don't go around raising your hand up and whistling to call the staff, because that's kind of rude in other countries as well. It's just normal here. You go to Singapore, maybe they're okay with it. Go to Brunei, I don't know, I haven't been to Brunei before. But you go to countries like the US and UK, totally different culture, you do this, they'll just give you a stare and they'll just ignore you because that's considered being rude. Oh, and yeah, in Malaysia, right, we like to take taxis and we sit at the back. Um, we sit at the back, but there are countries where you might see like you're treating them as like a chauffeur or servant. Um, this one is more of those um, former British colonies. Yeah, I guess. Because that's how chauffeurs used to work. Like, it's different in New York City in the US. Because the cabbies there all have like this door dividing the front and, ba- uh, the front and back. So it's normal. But in other countries, no. The cabbies there don't have that. I don't know why I'm saying cabbies. Ca- cabbies? Oh, okay. And um, talk about finishing food. About re- back to food again <laughs> so yeah we Malaysians are like crazy with food but when I went to China I finished off my food in the restaurant and um, they gave unlimited supply of rice so the waitress asked me what do you like more I was like oh no thanks turns out um, in China you're supposed to like leave a bit of food on your plate or if it's meat just leave the bones over there and don't throw it away to show your host that you're full but I find that's a bit wasteful, to be honest. And I don't, I don't think a lot of Chinese practice this culture. Um, mainland Chinese, because my friends from mainland China said like, oh, we don't do that. And talk about blowing your nose in public. Um, I once got scolded by like, okay, so I was on a train and there was this British guy on the train, on the RRT. I was blowing my nose in public and he was like, don't do that, man. Okay, he was probably like 24 and I was like, 16 he was like don't do that man i was like um, i'm having a cold he's like oh you should probably wear a mask so guys i wanted to talk something a little bit weird about our local culture other than the british guy on the train um i want to talk about our malaysian culture so i was sitting on the lrt a few months ago i think i was like um i was sick at the time earlier this year um i take the lrt almost every day at that point in time so it was the same people almost every day because i went back from class at the same time almost every day Mm, so on Monday, I remember I was going, coming back from school, coming back from class, and I was really sick. It was probably around like five or six p.m. Uh, my class, fin- my class finished at like two forty, but I stayed back in the library. Um, yeah, and I wore a mask, and everyone just literally stood up as if I had the bubonic plate. I was sitting down on the chair, and even the s- poor senior citizens got up. So I decided to say, okay, I'm gonna stand up. And the old lady sat down, but the rest of the people just continued standing up and walked even further. Next day, I removed the mask, I didn't wear it, and people were like, wear a mask, man. I'm like, yesterday, I had to make the old lady stand up because I wore a mask and I sat down. Today, you guys are telling me to wear a mask, and they're like, then they realize, oh, okay. Then they finally realized that what they were doing is wrong, because, okay, guys, just to rem- just remember. Okay. If someone is wearing a mask in public and still in public, surely, surely, surely the disease is not as contagious as the bubonic plague. Like, I get it. If someone has the flu, you want to sit away from them. But it's not necessary to get up from the seat as I come into the train and go to the other carriage, okay? That's a bit offending, honestly. Yeah, it's a bit offending. So um, let's think about any more rude things. Oh yeah, um, we're gonna talk about um, okay now we're gonna talk about stuff that is weird in Malaysia, uh, weird in other countries but cool in Malaysia. So um, the fact that we can speak so many languages, okay, most of us can speak so many languages, and the f- um, they are very confused at this. 
they think that we all speak Malay, they think we're all Muslims. But guys, we're not all Malay, we're all, not all Muslims, okay? We speak Malay, English, Mandarin, and Tamil, and some other Indian and Chinese dialects, and even Malay dialects, and Orang Asli language, Kadazan, and Iban, Dusun, all that stuff. And we practice, um, some of us practice Islam, some of us practice Buddhism, like me, and some of us practice Christianity, some of us practice Hinduism, and some of us um, Sikhism. So there's like five big religions in Malaysia. And there's like more than five big languages in Malaysia. In West Malaysia, there are four. In East Malaysia, there are six. And there's a lot of cultures in Malaysia as well. The Malays, Chinese, Indians, and the East Malaysians. There's so many ethnic groups to name for that, honestly. So we are all not just one race. We are all not just... We are one nationality. We are one country. We all live together in harmony, okay? Um, yeah. And number two. Um, <laughs> they don't understand like they seriously don't understand how we can eat nasi lemak cha kui tiao all this stuff for breakfast we can eat um all these noodles fried bihun all for breakfast you know they don't understand it they are like you're supposed to eat bread like do you know uh, we always say like uh, the roti bakar or roti steam and the telur mata is it telur mata mata telur What's that? Hard ball, uh, soft ball eggs are like classic Malaysian breakfast, right? Do you know when's the last time I had that? The last time I had that was like three, four, five. Last time I had that was five months ago. You know, I haven't had that breakfast in five months. I had it for dinner recently, but I haven't had it for breakfast in five months. So we are always big on um. Let's see, what have I eaten for breakfast in the past few months? Yeah, it was mostly rice, noodles, and rice and noodles, and they're just mind boggled. It's weird in other countries, honestly. Um, Essex, 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 Essex is a city in England. Eh, no, yeah, England. <laughs> Except Singapore, okay. They don't find it weird because they also do it. But the rest of the world, Americans are like, what? How? How can you eat rice for breakfast? And then you have the Middle Easterners. When I when I eat sambal for breakfast in front of them, ah, huh? they're like, huh? How can you eat that spicy thing for breakfast? I'm like, I love it. And there's like uh, so many, so many types of food, and they just find it mind boggling how we can travel to another state to eat. Like, if you live in the US, right, you probably wouldn't travel to another state to eat. And if you live in Singapore, you don't have to travel to another state to eat. Um, no, no hate on Singapore, okay? Singapore is nice food um, for each their own. Some of us might like Singapore's food, some of us might like Malaysian food. Um, I think that's pretty much it I have for things that Malaysians consider normal that are weird for some or the rest of the world. Or oh, um, the weirdest one for the entire, entire, entire world is um, probably our shopping malls. Okay, our shopping malls open at ten and they open slightly earlier than that. At nine thirty, their doors are already open, and they close at ten p.m. and they don't literally close their doors at ten p.m. I have been to Seven Pyramid. At like 11 p.m. and most of the shops, some of them are still open. Like you go to Asian Avenue, um, or the cinema still have shows around that. And you go to the food court, some shops might still be open. Key Life closes at like 10 because they are a franchise. McDonald's closed at 10 because they are a franchise. But those non-franchise shops, they close really really late. They close like 30 minutes past operating hours, which is not something wrong. It's actually beneficial. Okay, and yeah. You only get to enjoy that privilege in Malaysia, truly Asia. So, yeah, appreciate what you have in Malaysia and just know that, well, whatever I said earlier on, you know, may not be 100% accurate for all the countries and all the people in all the countries because the world is such a diverse place. We just have to understand that everyone might have different personal values and personal beliefs as well. So, one person doesn't represent the entire country and just like that um, the majority of the country doesn't necessarily represent a person either so if you guys enjoyed that don't forget to leave a like subscribe and turn on notifications and if you guys have more like fun facts about malaysia and stuff and if you like a fellow malaysian you just want to share with me your stories about um what you have done overseas that seem pretty rude or weird or wrong um, share the stories down below in the comments and just don't forget to check out my patreon you'll get exclusive content the link will be down below in the description and see you guys next